Nowadays, usually the body of Christ will go from zero to 100, whether in speaking or not to speak. Like you see a lot of people that are just really mouthy when it comes to the walk or being quarrelsome. And then you see the opposite where um, people are just completely silent, kind of in a place of like false humility. And every situation is different because sometimes you're going to need to be silent for the glory of God and sometimes you're going to need to speak up for the glory of God. In Ecclesiastes 3, to everything, there is a season and there is a time for all things, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Psalm 141.3 says, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. So we know that this door can open you know, to life or can be a door opening to death, depending on what you speak. And there were times, you know, again, it's all about the glory of God. There were times specifically when, um, like it with David and Goliath, you know, right before David slew Goliath, he talked crap to him and he did it for the glory of God. You know, he was telling him right to his face, like, my God through me is about to take you down type thing. In um, the New Testament, we have Jesus in Matthew 12, where the Pharisees were accusing Jesus of casting out demons by demons. Now, nowadays, like most modern Christians, I want to say, would say like, oh, just don't say anything. Let people think what they're going to think. But that's not true. It's, it's about what gives glory to God. Because again, this is a mouth, you know, it didn't matter whether or not the Pharisees believed him. It was about giving God glory. And your mouth opens the door to life or death. Faith is spoken. It is spoken. It's loud. You know, it's 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 loud in the way it's lived. Not loud like screaming, but it's loud in the way that it, it faith is something that's to be declared. Just like with David going against Goliath. He could have been quiet and meekly walked in there, but he walked in there in the boldness of the Lord. You know, the boldness of the Lord, which is truth. And there's a time for that. You know, the, the true love of the Lord is going to lead you, the Holy Spirit's going to lead you to hold your tongue sometimes, you know, when it comes to like being quarrelsome or gossiping or lying. But then there's times where it's wise to speak, glorifying God or speaking the truth or like uplifting someone else, you know, speaking well over someone else. So in Matthew 12, Jesus, you know, blatantly, because there was a crowd, so it gave like if Jesus had just been with the Pharisees and the Pharisees were talking crap to Jesus in private, Jesus probably wouldn't have said anything because, okay, think what you want. But because there was a crowd, Jesus, you know, Jesus spoke because the people were listening and the truth needed to be stated. But what I also want to say is that the Pharisees did something very dangerous here that we should never do. We should never speak ill of the powerful work that the Lord is doing in other believers. You know, the Pharisees claim to love the same God that Jesus, you know, was. And they spoke blasphemy. You know, the unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And one thing that I always think is so dangerous is to speak against the powerful work that the Holy Spirit is doing inside of someone else. Because it's not about us. You know, we should never speak ill of the other believers in the work that the Lord is doing with them or through them, you know, um, especially when it comes to using, like the Pharisees were big and trying to use the Bible against them. Well, the Bible says don't heal on the Sabbath. Da, da, da. But it was all about the glory of God. You know, we should use the word for what it's intended, not to beat people over the head, but Second Timothy, we got a lot of Second Timothy today, chapter 316 says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for, this is what scripture is good for. It's not attacking or fighting. It's not for justifying delusions of the heart and mind. Scripture is profitable, profitable, meaning it multiplies in abundance for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. And this is so that a man of God can be complete and equipped. That's what the word is for. And of course, encouragement, you know, the word is never in a place where like, you should have two people, like we're called to be of one mind. And that doesn't mean we're gonna disagree every time, but if you're truly, you know, discussing, having a discussion that's worthy of the glory of God, then 
it's going to be able to come to some sort of head with Christ at the head of it. Okay. So here the Pharisees in Matthew 12 were saying, you know, you cast out demons with demons. And Jesus says, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he's divided against himself. But then how can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Bezel, but hold on. I'm so sorry. I literally had like a word pop into my mind and I always think like, I'll remember it, I'll remember it, and then I put it off and I forget it, and so I'm trying to be better about that. So, as I continue, they're accusing Jesus of driving out demons by demons, and this is actually interesting here. If Satan drives out Satan, he's divided against himself, but then how can his kingdom stand? He's applying to the logical minds, because their minds aren't working in the spirit. Their minds, the minds of the Pharisees are working in logic so he's appealing you know he was in jesus was an intelligent man of course by the spirit he had the wisdom of the spirit and he's applying to their logic he had discernment to enough to know what to appeal to is what i meant not applying appealing and of course remember there's a crowd around so those who have ears to hear would hear so he's saying and if i drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your people drive them out now, what he's saying here, because the Jewish people back in the day, they had exorcists, and they actually used the, you know, demonic power of the Kabbalah. They, they literally were using demons to drive out demons. Literally, that's how they did exorcism back in the day, and that's why exorcisms were never profitable until Jesus Christ, because he had the authority. There's authority in the name of Jesus Christ. They did not have that authority prior. So here he gave glory to God. It gave glory to God for Jesus to stand up. And who was he standing up for himself? No, we never see Jesus standing up for himself. He was standing up for the Lord. When Jesus walked by the temple and saw that they made it a den of thieves, was he standing up for, excuse me, did he walk by and just ignore it? Or did he go in and flip tables? Because he knew that some people were only gonna hear by such things. They were going to, and it wasn't the table flipping. It was the tearing down of the vain imaginations in that temple. Mm -hmm. It was him going in there and throwing what they deemed to be precious, what they idolized over the glory of God, throwing it to the ground. That gave glory to God. Jesus knew where to hit them, hit wicked people where it hurt. And he knew, you have to understand that he knew their thoughts. He knew their thoughts, you know, so there's going to be times when the spirit, the Holy Spirit leads you to speak up and it's going to always be in truth, which is love, you know, and there's going to be times where people are offended by that truth. I mean, the, how do you think the Pharisees felt about that in Matthew? Not too good. You know, they, they have this, this Nazarene basically telling them, um, their business and they did not take kindly to that. So there's going to be times when Holy Spirit leads you to speak up and when he leads you to be silent. And it's all about what gives glory to God more. Never speak against the work that Holy Spirit is doing in the believers. You know, don't blaspheme Holy Spirit and never use the word to try to control one another. And if someone's trying to use the word to control you, you know, speak up in truth, correct that. If someone's trying to cast doubt over you or over your mind or your heart or, you know, whatever it is, I am a son or daughter of the Most High God. You know, I know the work the Lord's doing in me. I know my Father. I know, you know, da 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 whatever, whatever you need to say. There's nothing wrong because the enemy and those who allow the enemy to oppress them, they... thrive off of people agreeing with their delusions and you will be cast into a heavy garment if you should go into agreement and just be nice don't get me started on nice just i'm just going to be quiet to be nice but does that give glory to god do what gives glory to god because you can't live in the delusions of others and a boss once told me this great advice she said Sometimes being nice makes the situation worse. And it's the truth because sometimes you actually say the truth to somebody and it pricks them. You know, the Holy Spirit allows it to prick their heart and maybe they'll be changed. You know what I mean? And 
and you can you know you need to do this gently you need to do it in love but you need to say the truth nevertheless i mean you're not always going to be faced with pharisees and with people in churches you know making it a den of thieves but i tell you was there times that i wanted to go tear down the rainbow flags off of churches in my former city yeah and would i have felt any guilt or would i have felt any conviction or wrongness for doing that no but i couldn't reach them <laughs> We do what gives glory to God. We do what gives glory to God, and the world's not going to like that. But that's what we're here for. Apparently, I need to add this in case anyone feels incited to start a riot against gay flag, gay pride flags. I said that's what I wanted to do. I'm just being honest. Uh, what the Lord encouraged me to do is to write letters to these churches uh, because they need a choice, you know, what does it do for their for them or their hearts for me to take the flags down? Um, doesn't give them the choice to choose the Lord. So better was to write letters and let them know that the Lord hasn't changed from OT to NT and that these flags, which were clearly not representative of God's promises, but rather of gay pride, uh, were unbiblical. And just to just to make that statement. And then they from there were able to make their free will choices. Holy Spirit's always right. <laughs>